this idea that everybody kind of wanted to free themselves from the shackles of the empire and there was, you know, we all loved and sexed one another, you know, openly and put our beads and kaftans on was only part of the picture. I mean, in this country, the 60s became a time of the most vociferous, open racial hatreds. Immigration! No! Repatriation! Yes! The kinds of views expressed by white people, they were quite shocking. I've got no, I'm not racial, I'm not any prejudice of any kind. But I wouldn't let my children intermarry. My children are all married and I've got grandchildren, but I wouldn't approve of them intermarrying because it doesn't work out right. It may be one out of a, th a thousand that works out right. You've got enough problems as it is with black and white. Well, I don't, but children... What do I think of them? I think it's I hated some of the prejudice which was deep-rooted and terribly ignorant. If a coloured man loves a, a white woman, let him get married, by all means. Don't have no children. I Don't expected to find it, and I wanted to show it, and I wanted, therefore, by putting the spotlight on it, somehow to change it. In 1968, the BBC's Man Alive programme tackled the issue head-on. The film began with the marriage of this young couple. They met, as couples do, in a coffee bar. Eight months later, they announced their engagement. They were happy, a couple in love. A couple wanting to... This kiss the captured the moment and put the program makers on collision course with the BBC's Radio Times. It epitomised all that you would want your son or your daughter to be on their wedding day, and it should have produced oohs and ahs around the nation. Instead of which, it produced a refusal on the part of the Radio Times to put it on the cover, because they thought it would be too inflammatory. Now, the, the person who got most inflamed about that was me. I burst into print all over the place and accused people of being racist and prejudiced and bigoted, all of which was perfectly true. Unlike the Radio Times, Fleet Street couldn't get enough of the picture. The documentary also featured this family. Mandy Hulls is seven. Her elder sister, Anne, is 12. Their mother, Rosalind, comes from a cultured and distinguished Grenada family. She married John Hulls, an English librarian, 13 years ago in a Catholic church. But John Hulls' mother was advised by a vicar to persuade them to marry in a registry office. If the marriage shouldn't last, he implied, divorce would be easier. The Howells watched the film for the first time since 1968, with their younger daughter, Mandy, and granddaughter, Laura. In the mirror, I'm putting a veil on, and so I'm fascinated. Ah, oh, that's funny. Mother Rosalind comes from a culture. If I had to advise anyone now, not just my children, about whether they would make mixed marriage or not, I think I would remind them that they could be awfully lonely. Before I was married, I had a lot of West Indian friends, you know, people who I'd see quite a lot. And I said, but you never called me when you came here, you know. Oh, they said, well, we didn't like to, you know. So, yes, there was. What do you think they meant? I've asked them, and they said, well, you know, you're married to an Englishman, you know. That doesn't happen now, but in those days it did happen. Mm -hmm. There was almost a, a feeling that I'd gone away. John has become more English. We have the biggest rows here because John might be saying something and one of us jump in. And he says, let me finish. And we think, why is he angry? You know, we, we all talk together anyway in, in my culture. And the children are like that. We're all talking together. And he says, I never get a word in. But he, he hasn't learned that rhythm. Or, and we don't humor him on that, I have to say. You know, people will say... He married one of them, um, but I wouldn't notice it, I'm afraid, whereas Roz is constantly on the lookout for this sort of thing. I would be absolutely oblivious to people saying this sort of thing about me. Very early in life, the children realised that John was not prepared to entertain racism, but that he wasn't prepared to see it either. I used to tell them stories about we come in from the pictures and one woman spitting in front of me. And he said he'd hadn't seen when I got angry. 
and remarks when we were on the bus together, he would say, well, he hadn't heard. In a way, he probably was not dignifying their thoughts, but I, I had to respond and responded several times during my children's growing up. I can't remember any time when you actually stood up. Well, I can't remember a time when um, I should have done. Yeah, but you remember a time probably when I said you should have done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Several of them. <laughs> but I wasn't aware of these things going on. I pro I'm probably more insensitive than Roz is. I didn't feel um, any racism from black people. Um, they accepted me far more readily, I think, than white people accepted Ross. By the 